Ryan, thank you very much for coming. Absolutely, thank it's you for having me. Pleasure having you here. Uh, why don't you start by introducing yourself to our viewers? Uh, yeah, my name is Brian Egan, and I am uh, an American who is an expat living in Berlin at this time. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I kind of come from a design and front-end web background, and then a few years ago, four or five years ago, I decided that I really liked mobile apps and wanted to dive into those. And so I started working a lot with Android and moved from the web team onto this uh, Android team for SoundCloud. Um, and while I really liked the jump, I felt like I was missing some of the features um, that web had to offer when I was working with Android, especially the iteration cycle. Um, and the other thing that I really missed is, although people kind of make fun of CSS, it's actually a really expressive language and it allows mm -hmm. you to do all sorts of crazy stuff that actually some of that is a lot more difficult to do on Android. Uh, and so kind of through all of that, I ended up uh, reading an article about Flutter and mm -hmm. kind of diving in. And then I just started yeah, doing a bunch of open source with Flutter and seeing what worked and how it worked um, and seeing if it could really uh, be a good use case for either my own apps or business apps in general. So yeah, so that's how I sort of got started with Flutter and ended uh -huh. up in Europe from, from the US in general. Okay, that, that's uh, something that I wanted to ask you because a lot of developers here in, in Europe, they want to move they were set to the Silicon Valley, which is kind of a Disneyland for nerds. You did the exactly the opposite. So how come, what brought you here to our side of the yeah, pond? Yeah, yeah, uh, I think adventure. Uh -huh. uh, you know, I just, um, you know, I, I think San Francisco is a really cool town. As you said, it has a really good community uh, and developer base there. Um, and what I found is, uh, I thought it was an interesting town, but when I went and visited Berlin, I sort of fell in love and I fell in love with the idea of, like I said, learning another language and, uh, sort of experiencing a very different lifestyle. Um, I'm definitely sort of a, a hippie, I guess, uh -huh. in the United States, and so I really, you know, I like some of the social sort of features that Europe has to offer, mm -hmm. and um, also uh, the vacation time isn't bad as well. So, <laughs> especially if you compare it what you have, <laughs> absolutely, yeah, in the U.S. Yeah, yeah which is, uh, you know, and you can get, you know, maybe 12 or 15 days off a year, but uh -huh. yeah, you almost always get guaranteed 30 plus so days yeah. off a year, and. Um, yeah, I really like traveling and exploring the world, and to me, that's really important. So, uh, yeah, it was I makes was a lot of really, sense. Really cool okay. thing, yeah. Brian, I think in the last few years, mobile development has passed from being the bleeding edge to becoming more of a Java enterprise uh, software development. It's starting to become boring. Uh, do you agree with that, and do you think that Flutter can help bring back the fun? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so I think overall for me, um, I actually, I maybe don't see it as boring. Mm -hmm. I, I still see, you know, I, I come from a design background, and so I really actually still like designing unique experiences. And I actually think we're at an interesting point where we've kind of um, come from, like, having maybe very few standards on Android to having material design. And I actually see there's almost this next frontier of companies really doing more interesting things mm -hmm. themselves uh, and creating more interesting and unique experiences. And so I think for myself, I do see Flutter as a way to maybe mm -hmm. realize some of these designs that have been challenging in the past. Um, you know, uh, like I said, the Flutter team has this, this concept of never say no to your designer. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you the number of times I've had to say no to the designers I'm working with. And I think it's really cool if we could enter a frontier where we can actually start to say yes to these designs and start to create really cool stuff. I think there's actually, there is maturity to the mm -hmm. platform and that's good, right? We're starting yeah. to have really best practices around persistence and offline first. Um, but I still think we can reach reach new heights with it. Uh, it might not be as, as hot or as exciting uh, as something like blockchain, you mm -hmm. know, that's that's like everyone's doing blockchain, but I still think there's a ton to explore in the mobile space actually. Okay, and I'm not familiar with uh, Flutter, I just, mm -hmm. Took a, a look. It seems interesting, but it looks like it's very uh, centered on the the view layers, the application. What about the model, uh, local persistence, access to the hardware? Yeah. Uh, so Flutter, I think, actually uh, is, does provide a great UI layer. Mm -hmm. And um, so one thing I've been talking about lately is that actually we don't really need to reinvent a lot of these concepts, right? We've uh, you know we've been talking about how to layer your apps, mm -hmm. uh, and this is really important as your team scales. So we had about maybe 15 up to 25 developers at different times at SoundCloud. And, you know, we used really nice, uh, like, layering, to, you know, just layering our uh, application. So you mm -hmm. have, like, a really defined view layer, which would be where uh -huh. Flutter really shines. Uh, and then, of course, you can have some sort of presenter or controller, mm -hmm. whatever uh, terminology you're used to. Then, you know, your data layer, or sorry, your domain layer, mm -hmm. and then your data layer. Yeah. And so I still think... Uh, coming from an Android background, there's no reason to throw away those lessons that we've learned, mm -hmm. actually, and we should embrace those lessons. 
Um, and so I think Dart actually has a really good answer for uh, kind of being able to layer these things because uh -huh. it is a statically typed language. Um, and this gives you like a, a nice way to kind of create these layers and refactor easily. Um, and then with regards to persistence, um, overall, uh, I think, you know, in memory and uh, web storage, both of those are really well taken care of with Flutter. Uh, one thing I would like to see from the Flutter community actually is stronger uh, SQLite or uh, types of persistence. So uh -huh. on, on iOS, you're used to core data. On Android, you're you know used to SQL Bright or more recently the Room database stuff that the Android team has brought out. And so I still think there's a little bit of work to do there to mm -hmm. like really create a really nice and coherent uh, system. There is a plugin uh, called SQL Flight that you can use for persistence. Yeah. But it might still be um, maybe a little bit more low level than you're used to if you're used to working with, with tools like Core Data or, uh -huh. or Room. So. Okay, so uh, you mentioned Dart and also the excitement of learning a new language, a natural language. I believe you were talking about German. So <laughs> how hard or how exciting is it to learn Dart? What kind of language is it? Yeah, I, uh, it's funny. I don't know if Dart is... Um, the most exciting language mm -hmm. to learn. It's funny. I think uh, I think it's a very pragmatic language, though. Okay. And so that sounds good. I think that's one interesting thing um, about. Uh, so uh, in my in my talk, we I discussed developer velocity and being able to get up to speed quickly. Um, and Dart is really, I think, in, in many ways, kind of uh, cousin to Go, which is another language mm -hmm. created by Google. And that neither language is uh, maybe particularly like full of bells and whistles mm -hmm. uh, that you have, but. At the same time, uh, you can actually start using it, I think, very quickly. And so Google has actually done some really interesting user research mm -hmm. uh, around Flutter and using Dart. And a lot of times, they'll just ask JavaScript or Android or iOS coders to just try to use Flutter. Uh -huh. And people don't even realize the language or don't even think about the language they're using because it's you know very much a standard syntax. It looks very much okay. like Java or JavaScript. And so I think. Um, in some ways, I think it has some really nice features built in, mm -hmm. like it's got a good standard library, and it's got, I think, a good async story. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, overall, it's uh, I think you know maybe slightly a slightly boring language that's really productive, actually. And I think that's, sounds great. And that's actually yeah, and that's funny. Maybe I'm an old dog now, <laughs> but I actually really found that refreshing. You know, it's not uh -huh. like oh my gosh, I'm transpiling my JavaScript to like through seven different processors and you know mm -hmm. coming out with this thing. But uh, you know, you just can get up and up and running really quickly. It's got standard testing libraries, so you can just, you know easily. So even though it's not a very well-known language to the public, it has a lot of usage in, in Google. They're using it for some of their web or server-side uh, applications. Yeah. And um, I, uh, I can't remember exactly which. I think it's uh, uh, AdWords. Or AdWords. AdWords. Yeah. Yeah. And so they used to have like a big like uh, Google Web Toolkit, like this Java mm -hmm. technology, and they're using mostly Dart now. Okay, so it looks like it's a language that is very well suited for server-side development. And a friend of mine, Joe Conway, which uh, was kind of a die-hard uh, iOS uh, developer, and he's been pushing Dart for years, telling me to oh, check it out. And wow. actually, he wrote um, a web framework called Aqueduct, which is actually oh cool. yeah, 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 actually, yeah. and uh, and he was doing mostly uh, at his company. He does the front-end mobile apps using uh, native technology mm -hmm. and the, the back-ends with, uh, with Dart. Do you think that Dart, Dart is also a good fit for mobile apps with Flutter or it's kind of a... Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, uh, so I think if you look at the history of it, it was actually originally, I think, kind of, they had this like kind of wild dream mm -hmm. uh, where they would actually embed the Dart VM in browsers and replace JavaScript over time. Okay. So it was actually, in some ways, I think, always meant to be a good client-side language. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you uh, listen to the team, they're actually focusing and they're saying that they want Dart to be a really good client-side language, uh -huh. actually, these days. And so I think that's actually the team's focus at this point. Um, and I think I think it succeeds pretty well in that way. Uh -huh. uh, and so yeah, I absolutely think uh, that overall, Dart can, can be and is actually a very good client-side language. Uh, the reason for that actually is, although they sort of failed at this experiment of mm -hmm. getting the Dart VM running in Safari and IE yeah. and everything else, um, the fact that they have the Dart VM means that you actually have a really nice development story because when you're okay. developing your Flutter apps, it'll actually deploy this Dart VM along with your app to the device or to your emulator. 
And then when you make changes, it'll push those changes to the Dart VM, mm -hmm. and it'll just in time recompile those. And that's how you get hot reload. Okay. And so that's actually why it's such an interesting language is um, that it actually has this ability to do really nice hot reloading mm -hmm. and really nice, like, really rapid changes. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, yeah, wonderful. exactly. It's, it is amazing. Yeah. And then at, at the same time, because it's now a statically typed language, they can compile it down to native mm -hmm. ARM code. And so you actually get the best of both worlds of uh, a VM that's running uh, in dev mode and then, you know, compiled code that's really fast and starts up really quickly in, in uh, like, uh, compiled mode. And so that's really great for your end mm -hmm. users at that point. So you sort of get this, like, holistic experience where devs are happy mm -hmm. and your end users are happy, depending on the situation. Sounds good. So the more you talk about Flutter and, and Dart, it, it looks like... And apparently it started with that mission of being a JavaScript killer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sort of. And it looks like it, it's good for server side, so it could substitute Node. And it's good for the client side, maybe uh, substitute React or React Native. So do you think that um, Flutter and Dart might free our souls from the <laughs> damnation of JavaScript and React Native. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, I'm not, I'm not a JavaScript hater at all. Oh, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Like, it's funny. I think a lot of people don't like JavaScript. I think because that was like the first language I really, okay. you know, I learned PHP at the same time, so like I didn't know any better. You mm -hmm. know, I was like, oh, I guess this is just how all languages are. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're they got their quirks and stuff. Uh, but for me, especially working on larger teams, I think it's huge to have, especially static typing. You know, if you think about refactoring your code base, mm -hmm. uh, you've got a handler and it's called on click and you want to change that name to maybe like on button tap or something like that instead um, you know in a JavaScript code base it's really difficult to do mm -hmm. that kind of refactoring whereas in these static type languages uh, you can actually do that really nicely um, and just know that the, the changes you made are mm -hmm. safe and so that's where I think um, you actually get a lot of advantages from something like Dart and as you said uh, it actually can run really efficiently on the mm -hmm. back end as well and you can do really actually really fast command line tools uh -huh. um, and so I actually do think Dart has the ability um, you know I would never I would never bet against JavaScript at this point it's just yeah. it's going it's everywhere. A tough bet. Right yeah now. exactly you know it's like I think it's uh, you know like people betting against Croatia or something uh, yeah. <laughs> you know? it's like now nah, they're not gonna make it but they just keep they just keep doing it and uh, so yeah I really I really believe that uh, you know, I don't think it could be a killer mm -hmm. to, uh, to JavaScript because it is just everywhere, but yeah. I think it will be really interesting uh, to see its development, and especially with technologies like WebAssembly. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that's a, a maybe a key um, compile target just yet for the Dart team, uh -huh. but if you think about something like WebAssembly, I do think you could eventually consider something like Dart compiling mm -hmm. really efficiently to, to WebAssembly as well. Although oh. I think the Dart team uh, has a really efficient Dart to JavaScript compiler mm -hmm. as well, and I think they've got some really interesting technical reasons for why they think that's a, a good solution as well. So yeah, mm -hmm. overall, I think you can build really, you know, uh, we were talking about uh, Joe's library, Aquadeck, that's a really mm -hmm. high-quality server-side framework. Angular Dart is actually a quite a yeah. mature framework at this point, and um, as you mentioned, it's also used by the Google AdWords mm -hmm. team, and so you're talking about, you know, uh, teams that have real volume and real customers, and they're making yeah. good use of it, and they've found a lot of success with that. Um, and then, of course, you have Flutter as well, mm -hmm. which I think is just, uh, you know, it's a great mobile framework overall, or at least I've been really excited about the potential of it. Uh, and so I, I do actually think Dart is now positioned to to be actually a really interesting and a growing language. Bring a new hope. Yeah, exactly. This that's time right. of the that's JavaScript Yeah, that's actually Empire. exactly the name of uh, a talk that was given last yeah, year. Yeah, really? by, uh, by uh, yeah, a good friend named Eugenio. Uh, and yeah, he talked, yeah, he called it Dart uh, or Flutter, a new hope. A new hope. Yeah, exactly. So. Then we definitely need to check it out. Thank yeah, you very much. Absolutely. I'll absolutely devote some time to it. And I hope our viewers will be interested too. Yeah. Absolutely. Brian, thank you very much. It has been a real pleasure. Very interesting. And we hope to see you soon here in Spain. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks again for having me. Okay.